What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Study Hall here on UFS University. My name's Tam, and I'm joined by... Tyler. Travis TNT Tangerman. And Jake the Big Johnson Johnson. I love that nickname for you. <laughs> what Study Hall is for the unenrolled is we've taken a bunch of your guys' UFS topics as well as some of our own, and we sit down and we discuss them for your amusement, entertainment, and knowledge. A little bit of housekeeping. If you like the content, go out to patreon.com slash UFS University. Throw us a couple bucks. Get some cool stuff. Um, in addition to that, we've also just recently started up a, a, a TCG player. We'd love your support out there as well. Um, I think we're going to do Dragon Ball cards as well. Eventually. Eventually. Once we have enough sales that we can increase our inventory. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I want to talk about for the third topic is deck building mistakes. So the the thought process going forward from all these study hall episodes and trying to make the, the product better for you is every week we're going to be doing like some some – newsworthy stuff as well as advanced tech as well as basic tech and this is the thought for basic tech of for my new players what deck building mistakes are you making in order to and how can we fix them so we've all been a new player at least at one point maybe not jake he's always been godlike but we no, we I've have been a new player we <laughs> have deck building mistakes what are they, and how ha did you organically learn to fix them? That is the important part, is what steps did you take in order to fix that thing? Um, I want to start with Travis. So I think deck balance is extremely important, especially in UFS, because you are you have to know what like quantities to put your cards at. So because we since we have a check system, if you don't, put your cards that you want to see high enough there's a chance that you never see them because of the way our system works but if you put them uh too low or if you end up putting them too high then you see too many so it's like it's a paradox you just you have to know the balance and i think most of that ends up coming with time like i know when i first started and partially still am i was really bad at deck building uh, I would just build a lot of mediocre decks that didn't actually have a guided direction. Yeah, the whole thing was just to counter me. Every single deck. Yep. <laughs> uh, it accomplished the goal, right? <laughs> it did. It got me first at locals because I just lose to Jake every other time. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> and so you're saying uh, watching your ratios and making sure that like unique foundations or four checks or six checks or, yeah. or in non blocks, all that stuff. In check. Yes. Um, yeah, that's that's fair. Um, Tyler, Jake, do you, uh, you want to jump in? I think those are pretty common. Like those are the common deck building mistakes you can make. Um, when I became, oh, I think I'm a good deck builder, personally in my head. Um, the only reason I think I'm a good deck builder is because I didn't say I'm doing it to the top. Okay, uh, is because of playing drafts. And my brother, like playing card games with my brother. Okay. So when I was young, I used to build very, very bad decks. Every single deck I built was just bad. I can never win any games, nothing like that. So I sat down and I just like memorized every card that existed in all the card games I played. I know that's crazy. Like I would just that's sit like practicing down. six hours a day. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, I would sit down and I would think about every single thing to counter what counters what, stuff like that, and all these games. Um, I'm not saying you have to go to that length or anything, but you need to know what all cards exist and are being played in order to build a deck that is going to not have mistakes in it. Okay. Because right. you don't So have card knowledge. Yeah, card knowledge is probably the most important thing in deck building. I put it at number one for anything else. Okay. Do you have something? I'm ready to go. Um, so I think you need to know what is wrong with your deck. Ooh. So like, and that I think that comes with uh, after playing it. Time and testing? Yeah. So like yeah. I, I th if, if you can play it once and figure out some wrong things with it, that's a big step. Like... I, I just fishbowled with this new deck that I built mm -hmm. the other day and immediately it was like, well, I I drew like three or four hands and like just imagine like the this attack that I'm facing is a four mid block. Every attack is. Four speed. Four speed mid block. Every mm -hmm. single one. Okay. Just if, if that was the world I was playing in. 
So reptile, right. you're fighting reptile, right? Neat, <laughs> neat. <laughs> and it was like, every time. <laughs> what? What is? What's wrong with this? It's like, okay, well, I don't need these in the deck. This is too many. Uh, I need to change this up a lot. Um, this isn't as good as I thought it would be in this scenario. Um, and just fixing those, because like I I can't see things unless they're like in front of me. Like I have to I have to have experienced them before I can like really decide whether or not it's good or bad. And I think after I do that, then I can, then you can mess with stuff. And I think it's just figure out what, if you can figure that out. Cause I know sometimes people like just continue playing the same thing over and over again, not really thinking about why it isn't working. Yeah. They're, I, I know, I know what you mean. Like some people just get mad that this one thing is not doing well because it statistically has done well for other people. Totally. Um, totally. But, and then they get mad when they can't do it, so they just keep running it in, like running their face into the wall pretty much, mm -hmm. and instead of adapting and mm -hmm. changing it to their own play style, own works. Because deck building, if you don't have something that uh, that you do, like if, if, if you're playing a deck that you don't play normally and you don't know how to work it, it's going to feel like a mistake. But it could actually be the deck that could win an event. But at the same time, and, and to, to dovetail off of that just a smidge, uh, I am garbage at creating a first draft of a deck. Um, everything that I've ever taken from any for, to a major event ever that I've done well with has been a version of somebody else's deck that I have taken and changed ten cards of. Um, starting with that initial thing and being like, hey, this say deck that I stole from... Uh, the big Johnson. I think you meant Spike One deck. The but... Spike deck that <laughs> that say was one of the ten cards I changed. <laughs> this, this, this say deck uh, is now getting results because I knew what I was what I personally was missing in the game, which is how we get to what I think, and it's actually dovetailing off of yours. Of what are your cards? What's their job? Mm -hmm. Whenever I have finalized a deck. I put my cards into a bunch of different piles and I pick all my cards up and I put them in another set of piles. I put them in difficulty. I put them in, or sorry, I put them in card type. So attack, foundation, asset, action, character. And then I pick every, and I look at them and I count numbers. And then you'll know the number whenever you get learned. Okay. Um, you pick all the cards up and you put them in difficulty. So now I know how many three diff foundations, two diffs, one diff, zero diffs. I know what my actions are. I know what my attacks are. I'm running, I'm running eight, six diff attacks. What am I doing? Can my deck, can the foundations I have, can they support that? No? Then I got to change something. I pick everything back up and I lay it down into block modifiers. And I go, what's my high? What's my mid? What's my lows? And then I lay out my ones, twos, and threes. And these are all statistics that you can find on UFS Ultra, but I personally like to see it on the board. I like to see the cards. And I go, huh, this deck has six low blocks. I'm going to lose to Aaron Black. And that's something no one should ever say. <laughs> right <laughs> and so like i then go oh i'm running 24 high blocks and 16 mid blocks i have to take from the high blocks and then i pick everything up and i lay it down into the most important category which is what am i fighting here what's the what's the point how many speed reductions do you have how much damage reduction do you have how much speed pump how much damage pump um what's your momentum generation how do you build foundations uh how do you pass checks how do you um, stop your opponent from playing their game. Something that I uh, I put in to my deck now in every water deck that I play is I am I am trying to find the magic number of emergency rations because that card does two very important things that nobody is paying attention to right now. You will randomly lose to a reptile if you do not have this card or some sort of discard hate in your deck. You just will, whether it is balance fighter, emergency rations, uh. Especially with this next set coming out. Like, you're going to lose the discard. You are. And then at the same time, foundations are very free. There are plenty of enhanced colon big number. An emergency ration shuts down my staging area. And it's a two low block. This card covers a lot of different options for me. And so I look at this Venn diagram of what do my cards do? What's their job? And that card is hand control for myself. That card is board control for my opponent. And that card's also a really good low block. It's a good card. Mm -hmm. And then I look at cards, which we're going to get to in the next set, next section, like um, the tech cards, 
what tech cards do I have to get to play? So underwater, I've been playing it nothing but. I'm playing um, uh, Despise All Evil. And that card is not just hack protection. It's also opponent's board control. My attack, I blow up a committed foundation. They commit a card card in their staging area. I can't include their character. So, like, there's trying to figure out what... When do I play my attacks? If you want a, a good look at what I'm doing here uh, and, like, the, the thought process, go to uh, uh, Toy Soldier's YouTube account, and he talks about the different types of attacks. What are pokes? What are swings? What are, what are follow-ups? What are like punishes like mm -hmm. you look at those and you lay out your cards and go what are my cards doing what's the job that they do mm -hmm. and i think that is something that's just as important as what are the numbers in the math yeah yeah the english on the card also matters yeah and uh to build on that um uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> nice i see what you did there thanks uh no you did that <laughs> <laughs> so uh you so when building a deck, mm -hmm. once you're finished, once you've laid everything out, after asking yourself what your cards do, you need to ask, what does your overall deck do? So like, totally. what's the idea behind your deck? Because I've realized now after playing for like the length that I have, it's okay to build decks around a gimmick as long as your deck A supports the gimmick. B is consistent and C your opponent or it your deck says in some way shape or form that your opponent does not get to interact with this gimmick whether it be a counter to one of their answers or your character says they just can't interact with it or something oh, along not. those lines <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally 100% Yep. Which c comes back into play of card knowledge. Yep. I think everything at the table that has been said is important. I, mm -hmm. I think that every every single person has brought something. And obviously, focusing on one thing at a time is what you're going to get good at. It's why, it's why weightlifters don't lift every weight at the same time. They isolate. And that is a way that you're going to get better when it comes to deck building. Mm -hmm. Isolation is, is good in this testing environment. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other... Last, we've all shared at least uh, a singular thought. Um, is there anything else... That we that we possibly missed a small thing uh i remember that a little while back when me and tam would play a lot now you don't love me anymore no i just am way less have way less free time <laughs> <laughs> um we would whenever we would build a deck we would sit down as a group and we would go through each card and why it's in there stuff like that mm -hmm. talking to others does actually improve your deck 100 percent because you get multiple opinions it's like a Hydra is always stronger than a single snake. Yeah. Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra. <laughs> uh, I, I totally agree. Working with the play group. Yeah. Yeah. But and if you I, don't have one, message any of us on Facebook. Yeah. I'm sure any of us will help. Or go out to Patreon for the $1 level and you get access to our uh, TCG Discord. You can talk to any of us on there as well as the other people on the student body. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just have uh, somebody... Ask about Yoshimitsu. Yeah, totally. Like, hey, what, do you have any Yoshimitsu decks that Ooh, we can? I got a cool one. Play t that I, I, we can look against. I was like, yeah, I, I played this one. Like, it, it needs improvements. It but, sucked. Yeah, <laughs> but like this was a was this good. was a first build. Yeah. I liked it. it I liked like, it a lot. It, this I this is clearly well. an aggro deck, and I'm playing a defensive one, and we bounce each other's off, like, bounce ideas off each other like that. The symbol totally, defensive totally. Yoshimitsu seems good. Yeah. Um. Blow up a foundation and draw two cards. Damn. Yeah. Every turn. Um. Also, uh, the one piece of advice, majorly, that I'd want to give for our newer players out there oh, is... One piece of advice. Exactly. Don't be afraid when you're building a deck. Don't be afraid to try new things, and no, don't be true. afraid to break the norm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Three so, like... Points. But respect your elders. <laughs> when, when I first started playing... uh. I was scared to ever go above 61 cards when I was building a deck. As because, you should, you heathen. Because uh, the mentality <laughs> the mentality in the community, at least back then, it's changed a little. What well, is, uh, man, you know, this I deck can really... 70 cards now, okay? Yeah. It's changed a lot. Yeah. This, this, deck, <laughs> this deck can be 59 cards. You're at, 60, you're at 67, while this deck can be 59. And I think... That's changed a lot, as Jake has pointed out. Um, 
So like, just don't be afraid. Just test things out. If they don't work, you can always change. There's always room for change. Just as you change as a player, your deck will also change and evolve. So we're going to jump into the last topic because it is also deck building related. Um, and I don't, this, this is going to be a fairly quick uh, option. And uh, I kind of want it to be a, a little bit of a debate. But we'll, we'll get into it when oh you boy. see us tomorrow. With that, topic four, here we come. See ya.